got players. Hello again, Mr. Pence. How are you? I'm good. How are you, sir? Excellent, thanks. I've got a uh, full day today. I'm getting inundated with new games I've never played before, so I'm happy. That's a, an incredibly wonderful day. If you can do it while you're in your pajamas, even better. And SWO, hello. Yes, hi, this is Andy. Hi, Andy, how are you? I'm great. Great. It's a talk show. Hey, good evening. <laughs> Long-time listener, first-time caller. Well, welcome. I guess it's just the three of us. That's fine, because that works out really well. So, Pete, this one will not ne- have nearly the amount of uh, uh, rules unpacking right up front. So this one is great because it is, h- how do you describe commands and colors? I mean, it's it's just, I don't know, sublime, I guess. Uh, have either of you played any of them before? I just picked up the uh, the new Ancients reprint and did a self-taught solo on the, the first scenario, which I'm sure I got half wrong, but it, it was oh, great. Oh, no. That's the wonderful thing about this is um, I, was, I was just thinking about how do, I, how do I phrase this one where I just came out of Combat Commander where it's like there's so much because of the nature of the mechanism on the cards. This one, sure. as you see right here, is very straightforward. The cards are extremely easy to parse and utilize where the trick and the nuance of this game and getting even halfway decent at it is uh, is really in the the tactics and and the application of these mechanics. That's the stuff that you just have to say, okay, I know, uh, I think where people get inundated by this is they look at that wonderful chart that comes with the series of charts with all of the unit capabilities and and they just look at that matrix and they're just they're overwhelmed by it but this is so nice because it is very straightforward it's play a card do something okay now it's your turn i go you go i go you go and um for ancients combat this is just perfect i think i mean this to me this is my favorite of the series i to give you a little background i started with battle cry i moved on to memoir 44 which i love and i'm still playing memoir 44 on board game arena a lot now and ever since they've put it out there a couple months ago i have been i have usually three or four games running on board game arena at any time and it has rekindled my love for memoir 44 it does have its issues with scale and how do you re- represent card play in dice for tanks versus this auxilia unit here in ancients so i think borg richard borg has managed to take this to so many different uh, themes and facets that are some of them i think are fantastic i think they really shine because of the mechanism here with the card system. Some of them I think they're okay, but it just, it's just like, okay, I'm moving all the spaceships in my right quadrant. Eh, what does that mean? But with Ancients, it's take a piece of steel, march up to somebody, stick it in his gut, and you win, right? Uh, so, so the mechanics on this, uh, I will not belabor this. The, um, I'll start with the cards and then we'll go to the map. Uh, also, welcome Brian. Hi, I saw you come in, so glad to have you here. I think... Um, The easiest way is to just understand that there are three types of cards. Really two, but I'm going to explain them in thirds, just so you understand. Uh, So using my little pointer here, as I do in all of these, you have what are known as section cards. Okay, And these allow you, on your turn, to activate one or more units, as per the card says, in a particular section of the map. So depending on what your orientation is, your side of the map is, of course, separated by these dashed lines. So we've got left, center, and right. You play it, you activate one or more units. So let's say I'm activating three on the right here. I'm going to discard this. Uh, Actually, notice also that they have a helmet uh, on the top. That is important. I will come back to that in a little bit. But they will tell you specifically, hey, dummy, you can activate two units in the center. And notice it says, and or leaders. So the the leader part is a critical uh, component of this game because command and control, as in any army uh, combat, is going to be, you know, the, the side that best controls his units with his commanders is going to probably win the game. Now with this, you've got dice and cards and friction of war and fog of war and all that good stuff, but I think it simulates it pretty well. So um, they make allowances for that based on your use of leadership 
which is great. So I'm going to um, just pull these off to the side here. I, I don't need to belabor the uh, the section cards too much. You you understand that the left, center, and right, and of course the person sitting opposite of me, this is their left, this is their center, and this is their right. They put the nice little, you know, L and R there, just, you know, because some people... My, my buddy Peter, he likes to, who, who I play against, some of you may have seen that, uh, whenever we talk about left and right, he immediately holds up his hands and he draws two L's and he goes, okay, the one with the L, that's that's my left hand. Okay, cool. So some people are challenged with left and right. Uh, every now and again, he'll play a card and he'll start moving you. And so I go, dude, that's the right side. And he's like, oh, you know. So it happens. But those are the basic components of the game, the section cards. Moving on from there, there are... Uh, also tactics, but they're troop type cards here, and you'll notice that we have three colors for, well, for our colorblind friends, we have three symbols. We have circles, triangles, squares. They represent the heavy, medium, and light troops in the game. And this one lets you cross over boundaries, and it's based on the troop types that you're activating. So this one will be based on your command, and command in every game is uh, is indicated by the amount of cards that you have, and that is determined by the scenario. So most of the times you'll have five to six command cards in your hand, and that means in this case when I play this light troops, I can activate up to five units, that's, that's multiple blocks in a unit of light troops or medium or whatever I'm activating. Okay, So those are another variation of these where you can just activate one or more troops that way. And then we get into what are called, those are all tactics cards. That means, uh, you know, you're activating parts of the battlefield with the sections or groups of units. Those are your tactics cards. Um, in this game, the other thing you have are these command cards, which are also in the deck. And the difference here is obviously wall of text, but they give you much more power based on what it is that you're trying to do. Some of them are reaction-based, like this first strike card. So when my unit is about to be attacked by somebody, I can throw that down and make my opponent cry because I get to roll my dice first and inflict damage, possibly wiping him out or making him retreat before he does anything to me. I can also do things like move, fire, move. This lets me move my units around, fling some spears or shoot some arrows, and then run away. Or... Double time in this case. Um, we'll see when we open the unit types that most units move. Most anything bigger than a light unit kind of lumbers along at one hex at a time. So a double time card is just invaluable for just shooting up into combat, closing the gap, and attacking with some of your brute force. Uh, oops. Then we have rally cards, which if you have damaged units out there, there's one or two of these cards in the deck that allow you to roll some dice and potentially reconstitute some of those units that have been defeated uh, or knocked down. Um, I will say in this one, unlike most of the others, uh, so this title and Memoir 44 and eh, I think Battle Cry also... The rule of thumb here is that no matter how much the unit has been degraded, it still rolls its maximum dice all the time. That nuance changed a little bit as he came up with um, Tricorn for the American Revolution and Napoleonics especially. That's where people really like the system because it, it, it trades off some of the fiddliness because now you're, you're doing some mental math going, okay, this unit is now only two men, so he only gets two dice in combat. So this one, you don't have to sweat any of that out. If it's a heavy unit, it rolls five dice in combat, and it, it will do so even to the last man, which is kind of nice. And then uh, we have something like a counterattack. A counterattack counter just lets you copy the order that was previously played by your opponent. And what you will do is you will match the same section. So if perhaps... Uh, I played a left card over here as the Romans, then he plays counterattack on me, he gets to activate something in this self-same section. Okay? If I played a really nice card, like double time, he can copy that as well. So it's, it's this wonderful ability to say, that was a great card, I want to use it too, and you get to copy it. Okay? Um, 
with this, I'm using the most current Vassal module, so it's it's a little new to me because Peter and I have been using for the videos that we've been doing for the last three years, uh, just the one that's slightly older than this to the point where actually the new Vassal uh, updates give me a little uh, message saying, hey, this has outdated code, this thing's not going to work forever, so... Um, so I'm getting used to some of these other little bells and whistles that have been added since then, so uh, apologies in advance if I... If I can't find something immediately. Uh, so that's how the cards work. Very, very straightforward. I mean, play a card, do something. Uh, have I lost anybody yet? Yet. No, it sounds good to me. Awesome. Okay. So I'm going to uh, discard all these cards, and then I'm going to open up... Across the top here, I'm going to open up the little clipboard so those of you in Vassal can open it as well. This is one where I have to change the... Uh, the Green. So change windows, and let's change that over to the chart. So now with the charts, you can see that, and, and this is one of the nice things, uh, this was built by the folks, this Vassal module was built by the people who run commandsandcolors.net, which is this wonderful repository for both published and fan-made scenarios for all the different titles. It's a great just one-stop shop for everything, so uh, I'll put that link in into the box later for you. But here we can see all the charts that you need. This is what you would get in the game, the physical copy. So starting with foot units, you got, uh, you know, horsies and other things bigger, like elephants. Uh, player aids, just in, uh, oh, if you needed some for the specific releases. Uh, combat. And then the, you know, the epic cards with this particular version of the scenario, you can actually run an epics game, uh, which is eight players. It's like the overlord in Memoir 44. So you can have a field general, uh, three field generals, and one overall army commander who's giving individual orders to sections. And they can, to the best of their ability, attempt to prosecute that. Uh, and then finally, at the beginning of the tabs here, we have terrain. The, the terrain on uh, commands and colors is pretty simple. There's not a lot to it because it's most ancient battles were on wide open fields with some small variations based on hills and uh, unbro and broken ground and rivers and things like that. So you don't have a lot here in ancients that you have to sweat out, certainly less so than Memoir 44, things like that as they get into some of the other battle packs. Um, so on this map here, I'm going to switch back to the main map here. Actually, no, I'm going to stay, I'll stay on the foot units here, just for the moment. Uh, we could see, for those of you watching along in Vassal directly, you could see that both sides have everything, more or less, foot units that are listed here, with just a couple of cavalry. I think the Romans have a medium cavalry out there, um, the Carthaginians, this is the great battle of Lake Tresamine, where the Romans got routed by Hannibal, where he surprised them and pushed them up against the lake. So um, this is one of my favorite scenarios from the base game because it starts the Romans with a disadvantage. They start with two cards because of surprise, and then each turn they draw another card until they get up to four cards. So it gives the, the advantage to the Carthaginians for their surprise, and they can really wail on the Romans here. And this is a wonderful one to play with, uh, with the epic rules because you do double maps, and it's just huge uh, with, with the two boards put together. So it's great. Um, so here, just kind of working my way across the top on the units, you just see some kind of a depiction of them here, and then it tells you what class they are of the three symbols, the circle, green circles, blue triangle, square, red squares, um, how far they move. So that's pretty straightforward. Some of them have variable movement capabilities, so if they move up to their full allotment, they may not battle. Conversely, there are some that say, if you move two hexes, you must be adjacent and, and be in close combat, like warriors. The, the crazy barbarians in this game, you know, they can move one, but if, if they move two, then they must engage in battle in that second hex. So there are things that you have to kind of decide on the fly. And then as you get into the larger units that throw more dice in close combat... They lose their ability for range combat. They also lumber along at just kind of one hex at a time. And then when we get all the way down, we have war machines and light war machines, which are just, you know, your ballistas and uh, small field field artillery that uh, may or may not have any bearing in Ancients combat, especially when you need it. It never works. Um, so 
most of the, for the most part, your green light units uh, will be your first line. Uh, they have the very light armor, you know, the padded armor. They're throwing spears and javelins and, and bows and arrows and slings. And they move too. And then they, you know, they can have the ability to do ranged combat. And they get better dice if they stand still, for the most part. They also have the capability, if they move into woods, that they can still do combat where most everything else has to stop and do, you know, move no further and not engage in combat during that turn. But lights, for the most part, are your, your most flexible. Moving up from them, you have a variety of medium units that uh, run the gamut from just what you would expect medium, trained regulars, up to warriors, the, the barbarians coming down from the hills, to uh, things that get very specific based on some of the releases, like the Imperial Roman uh, Praetorian Guards, things like that. And then into the heavies, which are the most. So for the most part, your lights roll two dice in combat, one or two, depending on what their conditions. Your mediums will roll four dice in combat, and your heavies will typically roll five dice in combat. So they've got pretty significant punch. These are your hoplites, your heavy big shield crashing into them you know they've got a gladius they're just they're maiming people for for the fun of it um so in this game that's where the that's where the nuance comes in is you, you, the rule of thumb that we always use is you're not going to win this game on missile fire until that one time in a hundred that you probably do because you've picked off a couple of units here and there uh, for the most part this is about closing the distance between you and your opponent and killing them <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a very honorable way, of course. Uh, so I'm going to go back to the main map here for those of you watching the stream. And um, yeah, so hills for the most part here, hills just act as um, blocking line of sight for range combat. They really have no effect on movement at all. And these units can move over the, the hill. They do not have to stop. Um, where you get into the the special nuance of it, where people are always going back to the the charts, is uh, is a when a unit is up on a hill fighting a unit that is off the hill, that does impact their the amount of dice that they're rolling in close combat. For example, uh, units on the hill battling down onto a, a that they have a cap on their maximum dice of three dice. Well, for these auxilia, that's no big deal because they only roll three dice in combat anyway. But down at the lower side of things, you've got these medium units with a leader. Normally they roll four dice in combat because, but because they're attacking somebody uphill, they are capped at two dice. So another, just like real combat, effective use of terrain is going to improve your chances of holding the line and maintaining whatever it is that you're you're trying to do. Uh, questions so far? Nothing? Good. Okay. Sounds good. Fantastic. Um, so once you get beyond the card play, there's there's really not a lot to to tell you about it other than I mean I can kind of give you some some wisdom on this um, when units uh, we'll we'll talk about cavalry for example um, cavalry truly acts as a screening unit so if they are approached by a unit that's on foot or a unit that is heavier than them so in this case, I've got an, uh, an auxilia approaching here. The medium cavalry has the option to do a what's known as evasion. It's a fighting retreat, essentially. And they declare that before the attack is made. Before the auxilia roll their dice, you say, I'm going to evade. And, uh, oops, apparently I can't for this. But um, So it would change the symbol here to these little double arrows. And, uh, oh, there it is. Okay, now I can evade. There we go. All right. See, they've they've built more bells and whistles in this than I'm used to. Uh, so the auxilia is indicating they're going to attack the medium cavalry. The medium cavalry says, I am going to uh, take the lumps, but they get to move back two hexes. Uh, and the only thing that will hit them in close combat, normally in close combat, uh, 
whatever the color of the symbol is here, so a blue triangle in this case, uh, or a cross sword. Certain units, the heavier you get, they have the ability to inflict damage using cr crossed swords. In this case, though, since the med medium cavalry said, I'm going to evade, the auxilia would only hit on whatever their matching die face is. So they would only hit the medium cavalry with the blue triangles. So that's a, a one face on six, so 16% chance, but they're rolling three dice. So let's see what happens. I roll three dice and they completely miss. So they manage to escape that and they will go back to hexes because they evaded. They didn't retreat. They just don't get a chance to fight back because they, they prevented by screening that force coming forward. So that's evasion. That's an important concept. Uh, also, all these units here, like slingers, most of your light units, even the light cavalry units here, have the ability to missile fire. They can fire. Um, they can do that after they've moved. And if they move, typically the movement reduces the ability for them to get their full dice allotment. So for example, right now these slingers, if I activate them and I'm going to attack uh, that same cavalry that just moved away, right? They have a range of three hexes. This is one of those things where you're, you know, early on in your experience with commands and colors, there's going to be a lot of refer to the chart. And, and you just get it. After a while, you're just like, oh, it's light slingers, three hexes, cool. If they do that, they will roll. If they have not moved, they will just pull out their stones and throw two dice. And I'll come up here, click two dice, and two misses because they rolled green circles and they needed uh, a blue triangle on this. Um, if I had moved them a space, then I could still do combat, but I reduce my uh, two dice down to one. So for the most part, any light units that move before they engage in missile fire uh, only get to throw one die instead of two. So oftentimes it's best to just keep them where they are, especially if they have range like he does. He's got a range of three. Um, these auxilia, because they're green, they also can do missile fire, but uh, all auxilia and uh, all light units here so the small difference between them, they're both green circles. The auxilia have a little white circle on them. And that's these are the, the lowest of the low. These are your, uh, you know, your, your pikers that are out there and they're front line to be destroyed kind of thing. Um, what's nice about them is all of these little light units here that have just the green circle and the light cavalry with just the green circle, they can also do evasion on everybody. So if they're attacked... So if they were right here and this cavalry attempted to attack them, they could evade and run. They'll take, still take the lumps, but it, only green circles will hit them. Otherwise, you know, uh, the, a flag would be bad. Uh, we'll talk about the dice here in a minute. But then I just move back to, and the other great thing about evasion is it's truly screening. Normally in successful combat where you've either completely destroyed a unit or you force them into retreat, then most of these units, especially cavalry, have the ability to advance after combat and potentially do a additional bonus combat. Um, that is also true if you have leaders attached. Leaders automatically give you the ability, whatever the unit is, to advance after combat and do bonus combat. Cavalry have the ability to not only advance after combat, then most of them can go one extra hex and then attack again. So utilizing the strengths of those uh, individual units is, is really the, the key to this game. Questions while I take and a sip of water. But does that chain together, Patrick? So if you advance after combat, attack again, do you then advance after combat, attack again? Uh, sad, it, sadly, it no. That is a great question. It's one additional bonus combat. And most of the time, the, you'll see they'll have a little rule there that it's like, okay, he came up moved one, did another attack, he flushed them out again. Um, he, some of them will allow them to advance again, but not advance plus one, nor can they do additional bonus combat. So it, it varies from unit to unit, but yeah, that's that's a great question. Uh, for the just, most part, it's just one extra bonus combat. Gotcha. And then just one more quick question. Can you move 
fire at range and then close combat all in the same turn or is there a Ghost. No, that's great. And a, it is a wonderful segue. I got your $20 coming coming uh, your way. So in this situation here, uh, if I have gotten my medium cavalry up here, he is now adjacent to these slingers. Slingers can, you know, range combat can never occur when the enemy is adjacent in any way, shape, or form. So I've shut down his, their ability to sling at me. These guys can still throw spears at me, and these guys can, but these two that are adjacent to me cannot. So all they can do is either uh, attack, attack me back, or if I were to attack them, they have the option to potentially you know, evade away. But yeah, that's another, it's like, it's like controlling the battlefield a little bit, is you put a unit near some, some ranged ability uh, units, and you've shut down their ability to throw missiles at you. I, I was thinking, like, if you take one of those lights, like a light slinger, for example, who can move two, also fire, and do close combat, could they move one, fire a missile at a target, move adjacent to the target, and then engage in close combat? No, because all combat in this game is either missile fire or close combat. Okay, got yeah, it. That yeah. makes sense. Thanks. Um, there are some. There's a card in there that move fire move that would let you do this kind of thing where they're way back uh, here. You could move up. Fire. You could fling and then go. Oh, okay, we're out of here. You know, they'd get a secondary move. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so we talked about uh, evasion. We've talked about bonus combat, uh, slinging. And the rest of it is is cold steel. Uh, in this particular scenario, these hills right here are marked as impassable. So it uh, it does divide this battlefield. These guys over on this side, they are really pretty much on their own. All of these hills are normal, and so units can cross over them. I'm surprised in previous versions of this, I think they had a little text box that said impassable here, but that's okay. Um, the river, I mean, this, this lake right here is also impassable, so per the scenario rules, uh, any unit that is forced to retreat and his line of retreat is blocked, for every hex that he cannot move back, he loses a block instead. So in this game, if you take hits, they, uh, they reduce all the way down to X, and then once they get all their blocks missing, they go as a victory banner for your opponent. And every, every scenario will tell you how many banners you're trying to get to, and it's literally a race to get to that number of banners first. Um, so on the die here, I'm going to roll, I'll roll six dice here. Let's give you some examples here. Uh, let's see where we go. Okay, so you can see that uh, the, the normal faces are one for each of the symbols. You have the leader symbol, which only hits if the leader is... Uh, with the unit or adjacent to it. So he provides his leadership bonus. So you're basically giving an extra die face in combat, provided that you have a leader in or adjacent to the attacking unit, which is very, very handy. Cross swords will give damage to your opponent in close combat, but only close combat. does not work for ranged combat. Um, and it also, uh, certain units like these little teeny tiny lights here in light cavalry, you'll see on the chart, they do not get the benefit of cross swords. It's only from auxilia and bigger. So the mediums, the heavies, they, they're the ones with the real punch. So the cross swords will work for them. And then the only one I have not rolled yet, cross swords. There we go. I've got a flag. So a flag is a retreat in combat. This brings up another important part of Ancients combat is integrity of your lines, right? Um, in this game, any unit, like this guy right here, you say that Pete rolled two leader symbols and a, and a flag against me. Well, um, let's just say it was this situation here. This uh, auxilia attacked me. He got three dice. He scored two leader hits. Well, he's got a leader attached, so I would take two hits right here. One, two, and he scored a retreat on me that would force me back whatever the requisite number is. Cavalry, of course, as you might expect with horses, is, is horrible. So a light cavalry unit, basically it's however far they get to move in normal movement. That's how far they would have to retreat per flag. So if he had rolled two flags. So in this one, I'd have to retreat three hexes. One, 
two, three, because he's a medium unit. Medium units move three, so they retreat three. Uh, if he had rolled double flags, I'm up against the, the edge of the map here, and I would start taking losses, and that would be my last loss. That would wipe out that unit. So scoring retreats is very handy. The way you avoid that is to surround yourself with your friendly units. So every unit that is adjacent to any other two units, as long as he's got at least two more touching him, he can ignore one flag for having two units adjacent. He can also uh, he can also ignore a flag if he's got a leader present. So potentially in this situation here, these light units, if they got three flags rolled against them, they could ignore one for the units, one for the leader, but that third one on the die, they would have to take and move back. In this situation, they move back two hexes because that's their movement. So they would be forced to flee if you rolled three dice. I've seen it. I've seen uh, the dice. Ro the <laughs> the vassal dice roller hates me, and it always works against me. So if you've seen the videos, you know. Um, so yeah, that's retreating, which is a little different. That's that's a result of combat. That is not the same as evasion. Um, you can never score a retreat on somebody who is evading because only their particular symbols will match. The other difference with with uh, with retreating is if I force this unit to retreat, he was here, I forced him to retreat, um, he goes back here, let's let's just say for example it was this light unit, he's forced to retreat for whatever reason, this unit, let's say he did it, he has a leader attached, he can move forward and attack again. So that's where the, you know, consulting the, the chart, uh, that that's the the learning curve of the game is just getting used to it. For, for me, Ancients is far simpler, I think, than even Napoleonics, because Napoleonics not only has all of this in addition to, okay, you've got British light grenadiers and French, you know, medium chasseurs, and you just got so many variations. So each nationality, in addition to the unit types, has smaller versions, and they move three, but only fire two if they move one, and it's a Tuesday in Fisbin. That kind of stuff. So uh, each of the titles has a, a, a unit chart that can be, you know, it's something you just have to get used to. But for me, Ancients, I think, is is one of the easiest once you are used to it. And it's a lot of fun, too. So it's about it's about battlefield cohesion, uh, exploiting the, the wings here. If you can attach the guys on the, on the wings, they don't have... You know, he doesn't have support on this end, so if I can get up here, fight him, I roll three dice, I force, ooh, I got a hit, I got a hit here, and I force the retreat, so he would take a hit, and then he'd move back one. So, it's about moment-to-moment -moment battlefield tactics of, all right, I got a handful of here, what do I have in my hand, what, what can I do? And every now and again, you're going to be like, well, I don't have anything on the left side, and I've got three left unit, car or left section cards. Um, you can basically play the card and do nothing. That's kind of a discard. Um, that's going to happen. You know, it's it's not nearly as bad as Combat Commander where you just have a handful of junk. But in smaller scenarios, it's possible that you just don't have a leader on the right-hand side. Some of them will give you a flex. They'll say, hey, activate a leader on the right side. But if you don't have a leader, you can activate a unit of your choice. Uh, I think some of the the ones you saw there with the activate uh, all lights, it'll say, well, if you don't have any light units, act a unit, activate a unit of your choice. So you can do that. So for the game, for the most part, the game is pretty forgiving uh, as far as not totally giving you lumps. Now in this one, because the Romans start with two, it's quite possible with those first two cards, there's nothing you can do on your first turn because they've been surprised by the Carthaginians. So you just got to take it and then try to figure out what you can do after that. So that was uh, that was 34 minutes on uh, on the basic mechanics. Do you have any questions before we give this a whirl? One simple one: those the hexes that have the dotted line that are on both sides of the dotted line, you can activate with either card. Perfect. Very astute. Yes, I missed that. Uh, so yeah, you play, uh, and it's oftentimes tr you want to get like a leader into both of those because it counts as either for his side a left or a center. 
So that's one way you can help prevent yourself from being, you know, full of unusable cards is by making sure that you have something that has a little bit of flexibility for it. Great question. Um, there's, there's some uh, unit or some rather some leader movement rules as well. Yes, perfect, perfect right. question. So let me uh, let's see if I got uh, one of these cards that I used out here. La 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 la. No, no, it's always the one at the bottom, isn't it? Yes, there we go. So here, um, you'll notice that I mentioned that the helmet is sort of the little mnemonic device. It also says and or leaders here. So on this case. Uh, if I was Hannibal over here and I was playing this on my left side, I could activate, uh, I can do it a couple of ways. I can either activate the unit with Hannibal and move him forward, oops, or like that. Or if I chose to, I wanted to move him around somewhere, I could move the unit independent of the leader. That's two different activations because they don't they don't move and separate. They they actually physically have to depart. So in this case here, I would move this guy here. Uh, I'm going to move this one to here and now I want to move Hannibal up to move here. Leaders can move up to 3. Um, and then they can attach and also when they're just out in the field alone, units that have to retreat would normally retreat through them and past them, they will basically stick to the leader and and you know grab and stop. The leader says, "No, go go no further." Um, so that's how that works. In addition, let's say that uh, Hannibal is over here and we get into a little fight. So I roll. Let's see if I can. There we go. Discard. Um, Hannibal rolls on this unit here to attack. He's going to roll four dice and both the He's going to have 50% chance on these dice because the green circles, the cross swords, and the leader symbol will all hit on this auxilia. So he's going to roll those four dice now, and he gets two hits, and he forces two retreats. So this auxilia would, would retreat one normally, but he got two flags. He's not supported, so he's going to have to go back from whence he came. Um, Let's say he only had to retreat one, for example, that that would allow Hannibal to move forward. And because he's attached to that unit, they could make a bonus combat against the, the unit that was forced to retreat. So he'd roll another four dice and not do as well this time. He just gets the one hit. Okay. Conversely, if my unit here attacks Hannibal, because they're crazy, uh, he would get three dice in combat. And only the triangles and the cross swords would hit in close combat for that auxilia. So I roll three dice, and I get one hit. So I scored a hit on Hannibal. So he takes the lump. Whenever you score a hit on a unit with a leader, there's a chance that the leader may die. And what you'll do is, if, uh, if there's at least still one block left in there with Hannibal, he will roll, you will do that, you will roll two dice... So I would roll two dice on that. And what I'm, ooh, close. Uh, I'm trying to get double leader symbols. And it happens more than you would like. Uh, if you get double leader symbol, the leader is killed, and that becomes a block, a banner that you capture towards victory. Um, if the unit itself had been completely wiped out, and he goes to the track, now you still make the check on Hannibal, but now you only roll one die, and... Hannibal would survive, and he would then be forced to flee back up to three hexes. And uh, and he can go any way he wants. It, he still has to go one closer to his his hex side, his map side. Uh, but he can stop, you know, uh, up to three. He can go one, two, or three. Uh, if he was even closer and he was forced to, he could go back to the edge of the map. And if you want to prevent him from being a casualty in the future, you may voluntarily... Uh, move Hannibal oops, off map. So he would just retreat off the map and it's not it's not a banner towards your opponent. It's just you decided to prevent him from being a casualty later on. That's a, that's a pretty extreme one. You have to be in a real tight spot to to voluntarily do that because leaders are so important in this game. What else we got? Questions? 
Uh, for the ranged combat, you kind of mentioned how the hills block that. Do intervening units units block it, or is it just about being in range? Yes, intervening units do block it. So in this situation here, let's put um, let's put this guy up here. Um, uh, this one not so much. Let's. Well, yes. So in this case here, this guy cannot see him because this unit is intervening. Okay, uh, I'll put him up here, and it's it's not too bad. Basically, as long as you have at least one half of it, you can see. So this light unit can see that one, because he's got an open way this way. Um, even if this unit was way over here, this one can still see it because they're on the same level. So these, these do not act as blocked intervening because they're both on the same elevation, for the most part. Uh, unless... The scenario like this one says that these are completely impassable that blocks line of sight for units because they won't they will not be on those hills so they won't be able to see past them but uh, yeah uh, for the most part uh, if you've got let's see I've got him and him here he cannot throw at that because he has no line of sight and and also he's he's adjacent to an enemy so there's lots of reasons but y you get the idea it, it units can block line of sight as well as terrain. So what do you say we uh, reset this thing here? We'll restart it. And if one of you, I'm going to come in as observer, and if uh, if one of you wants to come in as player one and the other one as player two, just right click and synchronize on me again. You'll see the new map. Then you can use the little go out the door and come back in. One of you is player one, one of you is player two. I think the other one has to probably be observer or solitaire, whichever. Um, hey, I, I chose observer. Uh, okay. I have to drop at five. So Andy and Brian, if you guys want to be player one and player two, that's cool. And uh, <clears throat> we will... Perfect. So um, per this scenario then, player one, you get to, you're the Carthaginians at the top. Um, you get to draw, oh, it's actually got the scenario notes here. In that little scroll, it will give you the information for this scenario. It tells you, uh, you get six command cards. So you can draw up six. And I think if you just, in the, in your card window, you say deal cards, it'll probably give you all six at once. And, uh, and the Romans, the Romans get two command cards to start. And if you hit deal cards, it should just give you the two. Perfecto. So everyone's drawn up, and um, uh, we've, we talked about this lake down here is impassable. Uh, at the end of this first Roman turn, he'll draw up to to three cards, and then on his third turn, he'll get four cards, um, and and that's it. You know the uh, the Carthaginians get to move first because they're surprising the Romans. So Brian. Uh, all you have to do is right-click on one of the cards and say, play, I think. I think I still need, this is Andy, I think I still need to reset my screen here. Okay, okay. What is the uh So if you just part? if you just right-click on my name over okay. in the current game room, you can say synchronize, and it should. Gotcha. There it is. And, uh, I have no favorites here. You're all new friends to me, so if you have any questions or or things you'd like my ask, suggestion on, I'd be happy to. But otherwise, I th I think you guys know enough to be dangerous now. So just don't just... know that I feel that dangerous. But... <laughs> <laughs> you'd be surprised. Once the dice get hot, then you're like, I'm a genius on the battlefield. <laughs> All right, does it start with uh, with me and the Romans? Yeah, uh, no, Carthaginians first. Oh, Carthaginians, okay. Yep. Yeah, I'm trying to decide what ah, to do. See, there it is right there. Decision. I, I will tell you, uh, for the most part, in, in all the games I've seen of this, uh, the Carthaginians typically... Uh, can come over here first and use if you have right cards you can harass and harangue a lot of these light units here on this wing because they're very brittle and they're up against the wall 
Um, but they're also danger, in danger of, you know, the slapback because they don't necessarily have an easy way to re retreat if they get blocked. Uh, the warriors here are wonderful, but you got to get them in range before they can charge and kill stuff. And then all your meat and potatoes is on this side with Hannibal. is just kind of moving things forward, deciding whether or not you're going to focus on this side of the hills or this side of the hills. So that gives you any kind of advice. Okay, and that maybe this came up earlier, but do we play out our whole hand every turn? Yeah, you play or? one one order, and then it's I go, you go. Okay, but then he's only got two cards. Right, so, so. he will have two choices, and if they both suck, then he's just going to draw up. Uh, he will discard zero and draw up. But, uh, yeah, he, he would play one of his two and then draw up to three. And then go back to you. And oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, so every card play, he's going to gain another an extra yeah, card. Yeah, until he gets up to four, right? Okay. Um, all right. I will play that. Okay. And then you right-click okay. on it and hit discard, and it'll go over into the discard pile. And then I think this one's just easy enough. As you saw, as I was clicking on things, it'll automatically put a little black halo on it or a circle to indicate that's the one you want to activate. Or if you start moving it, it will also do that. Um, typically, all movement comes before any type of combat. So if you want to get something into range for missile fire, you have to do that movement first. Okay. And then these mounted units can go four X's. And they, they can go up to four, yep. Um... And then if they're adjacent to units, I can choose, like, they're going to attack this specific unit, or do they kind of, like, attack everybody around them? No, you can choose what unit, and you may opt not to attack. You can just get them up there to kind of hold the space and not, but you'll probably be attacked in turn. But that's the great thing about cavalry. You can put them in position and then potentially evade back as things try to, to force you away. Okay, so... Ah... And if ever you need to, you just hit that little undo button at the top, and yeah, that's your friend. And I had my access to my two cards, and then uh, I seem to have lost them. Do they come back on my turn, or do I need to? Uh, go ahead and hit uh, hit the the go out the door and try setting yourself as player two again. Okay. Got a bunch of sides, left, center, right. Is that? Uh... Uh, that's for the the epics. Uh, do you see yeah. player two on there at all? Uh, not just player two alone. Okay, uh, go ahead and try solitaire and see if okay. that lets you do see that. If, if I move this leader and the cavalry together, is that one activation as long as they stay together? Yes. Okay. Uh... know what I want to do there, but I'm just going to move them, move well, them let, up a little let, bit. Let, let me give you one little tidbit. You're you're almost okay. there. If you move him his one more hex, and you put him right there, ah, that, then that leader the... is now giving his influence to these should they attack. Yes, okay, that makes sense. Alright, so I think that's all my... I do all my moves, right? Yep. And then... Any and all combat you wish to do. Do I do them like sequentially, or you can do whatever order you want? So that's that's another nugget of the game is figuring out what's the order of operations that's optimal. Okay, well then I think maybe like this guy is gonna attack the light. Um, it's right in front of him. Okay, you just click on that light and it'll put a little target symbol on him. There you go. Ah, there we go. All right. And uh, and then you just roll two dice and uh, it, the etiquette that Peter and I use is uh, we just announce what it is because we're recording it for video but you don't have to uh, and then it's uh, two dice plus leader because you've got a leader adjacent okay so just to, just to indicate that he's in effect that the leaders are exactly, going to be exactly exactly okay so two dice plus leader okay uh, the big old miss yep uh, so now he before you move on gets to fight back so he will roll two dice back at you because he's a he's a light unit. I just hit the two die button. Yep. Okay, and he does not score a hit on cross swords because he's light, and he doesn't score because he doesn't have a, a leader adjacent. So that's a a slap and tickle fight, as we like to call. 
And now you move on to your next. Yeah, it's targeting that same unit. Uh, two dice plus leader. So All right, we got a retreat in there. Sorry, uh, yeah. I was on mute. Uh, he can ignore <laughs> the retreat because he's got the support of his two compadres there. Oh, that's, oh, that's right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So now he will fight back with two. Okay, so he hits you once because he doesn't get the crossword, but he does get the circle. And then uh, I think if you just do Control H on that, there you go. Uh, and now you got this this last unit. Uh, he's the only one that's kind of in a precarious spot because whatever he attacks, if he gets if they score a retreat on you, you're going to have to come back for hexes or more potentially. Mm-hmm. Well, definitely hoping the first two attacks would be yeah. better. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that is always the hope. Yeah, I think I'm just going to leave him there. Perfect. For, okay. Sit tight. So when you're done, you just uh, come up and you hit... Uh, where's the button now? Do, 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 do. I think... Uh, oh, my gosh. So the, Oh, it's the little uh, time advance, the uh, little uh, hand on the hourglass. So you click that. That should sweep everything away, clean the map. There you go. And it's now the Romans' turn. Vinny Vita Vici. Okay. All right, I got my cards back. And so first is play a card. Yep. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, it seemed like it that's might be. That's a very good one. <laughs> All right, so you discard that. And okay. anything and everything that's adjacent. And what was the discard action? Oh, just right-click on it. You can do discard. Oh, just right-click? Okay, yep. gotcha. What's the plus two? So everything that's adjacent to another ah, unit, two additional dice. We'll get two okay. additional dice in combat, so that makes these little lights pretty effective too. Okay, yeah, so I can do that. Head. Or go ahead, sorry. Yeah, so, I don't move here. If I just go right to combat. Yeah, so you can do all of this. Basically, they're gonna. Oops, I, uh, I did that for you. Oops. Um, yeah, you just click on whichever one you, you want to do in order, and then. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm going to start here, and uh, getting my interface understanding here. I um, think it's as simple as just clicking just... on that light cavalry, and it'll put oh, a target. Just... Yeah. Okay, just click on it. Gotcha. gotcha. And then, uh, yeah, you click you. Um, and so he has an option, before you roll the dice, yep. knowing that mm -hmm. you're going to chuck six dice at him, he can evade. evade. Yes. <laughs> he didn't even know. Yes, what yes, I will do. do. Right. So <laughs> you just uh, you just right click on it and say evade, or you can do Control E. And yeah, I'll I, don't, put the... I don't have the option. I think he because oh, it's because yeah, his, click... his aren't marked as attacking. Yeah, go ahead yeah. and click your medium infantry real quick. There you go. Now you should have the option. There you go. So that gotcha. you everyone okay. knows now that yes, I'm I'm stepping back. Okay, and so that's a. Uh... Four plus two, so we're at six. Yep. And so you got one hit on him. Everything else is discounted right. because he evaded. Very nice. And, and you can go then... you can go to either one of these. Um so I'll do that. Okay. And then you uh, just move on down the line. Okay. <clears throat> Docking, okay. So here this is uh is this two plus two. Mm -hmm. So you will be four. chucking four dice at you. What would you like to do? Well, but he has the right to oh, evade. Hi. I think that's the evade is on there already. Oh right? yeah, he did. I'm sorry. Okay. Sorry, jumping ahead. Oh, that's. Uh, I, no, was, that's I was. I was slow. Uh, so you got one hit on him, and one he hit. evades. So this one will be three plus two, so you get five dice. 
Okay, and this is three because of... Uh, They're auxilia. These are battle-hardened oh, veterans. Nice, all right. And want to hit on that? There you go. Hey, hey Patrick, can, yeah. can you just remind me? The, the evade, the cross swords don't have an effect when the when the cavalry is evading? Is that exactly. what happened earlier? Exactly so, yes. And the only thing okay, that counts no. is, is the symbol that's being attacked. Okay, so I see that makes sense. Got it. And uh, it, sadly, you don't have anything that can attack with that last one, so you just forego it, and that's yep. the end of your okay. turn. Uh, just do no battle? Right uh, no battle on there, you, I don't think you even need to do that. Do that. Yeah, you could just uh, you can hit the uh, time advance and should draw you back up, I think. I'm not sure. Yeah, it drew me. It drew my card. So. Perfect. Okay, so this one should know that you're going to get two more now. Okay, and time advance one is. It's the little hand on the uh, uh, on the hourglass up there. Right, just okay. directly above here. Oh. Gotcha. Did you get three card or two total more? Uh, no, I just got. Well, I have two total. It basically replaced the one okay. that I. Okay, so go ahead and manually in yours. I think you can use the little hand to draw a card, and you yep. should. There you go. Yep, got it. Cool. I like the chess clock. Do people play with that? Sometimes? <laughs> the, this Patrick? is. Is that I've, the rules? It's the first time I've ever seen it. So I, yeah, I, I oh, think I it's you. neat. But if you have that one guy in your group that's like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> we're not we're not playing actual SPQR here, man. Hmm. We have a new visitor, Richtofen fifty six. Hello. I'm going to drop uh, Patrick. I just want to say thanks again for uh, for running me through another one today. I really, really generous of your time. Thanks so much. Fantastic, Pete, and I look forward to talking to you soon. All righty. Take care. Take care, man. So we have decided to start moving the left side. Yep. <laughs> right did not go as planned, so... <laughs> If I had a nickel for every time. I think what I'm going to do is move them. If I can get this guy picked up. There we go. I think they can each just move one. Yeah, or, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When they're that big, it's pretty much all you get to do. And they don't have range capability, so that's it. Uh, all right. I feel like I'm at C when it does that. All right, let's uh, let's get the center going here. <laughs> Got to start memorizing my uh, movement metrics here. These are are two. Uh, which one? Is it, uh, the um, it's light. Oh, the light. Yeah, they get to move up up to two. Uh huh. Okay. And with the auxilia, if they move two, they cannot battle. But if they move oh, they one, battle, right? but if they move one, they That's... still can they can throw. Okay, let's. Uh... Yeah, go here then. Or do I need to undo that? It's up to you. Is I mean, it's it's, the... it's fine. Yeah, we got it. Okay. Okay, so that's the two units. Uh, going to the attack. Actually, no, we get. Do we do missile fire first? Uh, you could do it in either order you want. Yep. Sometimes right. it's advantageous, advantageous to do one versus the other, but it's up to you. Yeah, I'll try. Let's 
some missile against the slings. So he gets one die because he moved? Yep. That's a hit! Oh. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, love the, I love the reaction. Like, oh, that, that worked better than I expected. <laughs> And you have taken away his capability to evade because he is blocked in, so he's just got to take it. Right. And... They are two dice in close combat. And that's nothing. Nothing. But he can strike back with two dice, and he has a leader present, so he could potentially yeah. hit you. Oh, double clutch. So hit the back, uh, the undo. Yeah. There you go. So you got one hit on him. As control H. For... Yep. Yep. All right. Uh, looks like that's about all I can do. All right. There we go. And I'm going to step away for a brief minute and I'll sure. be right back. Now is your moment to decimate him. I think so. <laughs> at least I definitely have a shot at these guys because they're kind of off by themselves. Andy, are you back? He's not. Okay. Yeah, I'm assuming he'll be second. Do you want to wait until he gets back? Or um, I just yeah, well, he's, gonna, he's also going to get to draw up one more card, so that may make the difference. Mm. Oh, yeah, certainly. And where are you, Brian? Where are you located? Uh, in Iowa. Iowa, that's great. It's yeah, middle of everywhere. Yep, it's uh, far away from everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, half full. Uh, yeah, my my regular playing buddy, he's uh, originally from Iowa, so he he tells me about yeah, it, pretty much that same description. Far from everything. Yeah, that's great. You guys yeah, getting you know. any snow? Are you socked in? Uh, we had a little bit the other day, but it was like you know there was that cold bit when it was like the whole country was cold. Oh yeah. Um, but other than that, it's actually been. Pretty mild. That's good. Yeah. We're supposed to have a, a mild free. I'm in North Florida here, so we're supposed to have something that's, uh, you know, in the upper teen or upper 20s tonight. So enough for me to have to go out here and cover the plants after. Yeah, it's like a, almost an emergency there. Ooh, I know. Ooh. <laughs> you know, we, I mean, the, the, the four days around Christmas. Back. Okay. Hi. Uh, I, All right. Andy, Andy, go ahead and draw up one more card because you you are now entitled to four. Cards. Oh, was I okay? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry for really waiting on me the whole time. But well, we, I just didn't want to in case something comes up that that may be advantageous for you to use against whatever he's about sure. to do. Sure, sure, sure. sure. Shenanigans. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I I already played my, card. my uh, Okay. Went and grabbed my uh, hard copy reference sheet from. Oh, the, perfect. The yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not take up some screen real estate. Yep. All right, so Brian, you're off and running. All right, so I'm doing this order light troops thing up to command. And uh, I think these slingers can move one and then attack. They can? All right, so they're going to go like this, this, and then... Okay, they're going to step up, so that's four... So, um, like it. if if you want to, just this is you know strategic advice. But um, mm -hmm. so one of the things you can do in this game is if you bring him right here, you're now cutting off his avenue of retreat. Ah, 
So sometimes that's what lights are good for, especially if you've got an avenue to retreat out of, but he doesn't, then surrounding and doing that means that potentially if you get a retreat symbol and he has to flee, which he would, uh, that can be crippling to these light units. Okay. So he'll go that extra one sorry, because now sorry, he won't Andy. be able to. He won't <laughs> yeah. be able to attack. Well, so you, you do. Save well, he will attack there. back, but uh, yeah, if if you can force him into retreat, these lights retreat two hexes, and he's blocked. So that'd be two blocks right off the top. So that's five of my six. Um. Now what do I want to do with my extra one? Um. So equal to command means equal to the number of cards you normally have in your hand? Or? That's, that's right. Okay, cool. Let's see if they can move through a friendly unit. A light foot may move through a friendly unit. Right. Uh, I guess it was going to move them up one. Okay. So now you can do your combats in any order. Just keep in mind that this auxiliary right here, since he moved two, will get no combat. Yeah. But everybody else, you can do as you feel. Um, I think I'm going to attack with him first. All right. Tell me what your attack strength is. Good question. Um, it's in close combat. His close combat dice is two. But he's, I think he's since he moved. He's an auxilia, he so he's actually three. Oh, you're right. Yeah. So, so he's, he's a, a three in close combat. And what else does he get as a benefit? And he'll be with the leader. So That's it. So he's going to be hitting on... Uh, so three uh, dice plus leader. Cross swords, green circles, and uh, uh, leaders will all hit that light unit. And that's a that's a wipeout right there. <laughs> all right. So you can just drag him off to the to the boneyard there on the right, and you put that on the top row because that indicates that that's a banner for you. There you go. Uh, that auxilia could move forward. But he doesn't get to battle again. But he could advance into the space if you want to kind of build a wall there. Uh, otherwise, you can continue on to any other unit you want. And um, this this unit can now engage in missile fire because this is an open space. Okay. Then yeah, I think uh, I can figure out how to get these markers set up right. Back. Oh, that's close enough. Um, so he'll do a missile attack. Mm -hmm. So just one die because he moved. Yeah. Uh, what, but with the leader. Well, the leaders will not count on missile. They're, they're only close combat. Okay. They give you that benefit. Okay. That makes sense, actually. Yeah. Okay. That's a hit. Oh. Take this man to Vegas. <laughs> Getting all the luck I didn't have in my first <laughs> action when I just did nothing. <laughs> uh, does normally you let the other player reduce the take the hit or? Uh, yeah, the the owner owning player will take his own hit. Yep. Yep. Sorry. All right, and uh, you still have two left here. You got this one and this one. Should you choose to, you don't have to. So this guy he moved two though. That's okay. Right? He's in close combat. They can yeah they can always do close ah, combat okay. in two. Um, in, in this case, the utilizing evade wouldn't help because I don't have the distance, right? S sadly, the auxilia, because they've seen some wars previously, they will never be able to evade. Only the okay. light slingers and light cavalry, uh, light cavalry and light foot, light infantry, rather. Um, so yeah, they have to stand and take it. But these guys, mm. you know, they're only oh, they're yeah, only throwing sure two that. dice. No, I'm going to switch and do this one first. I okay. figure he'll still be in range of the other guy. Ah, sorry. Um, okay, and so he's in close combat, but he's not... This one's not Auxilia, it's just these, uh... 
other guy, so he'll only have two dice. That's right. Yeah. And a leader. Uh, no leader present. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So that's a big whiff. But now, uh, Andy, you're gonna f you're gonna fight back with three dice. All right. And that, my friend, is pain. You get, <laughs> yeah, that's rough. You get three hits on him. Okay, sorry. So that was rough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the slap back is always the most painful. Uh, and then you've got one more if you choose. You don't have to. Why not? Um, so this will be the same, right? Two dice. Two dice, right. And you force a retreat on him. That's handy. So he has to go back one. In this case, he doesn't like... Does he hit back before the retreat? No, the he, he will not, because you forced a retreat. He will not get to attack okay. back. And your combat is now complete. Yes, indeed. All right. All right, Andy, your turn. Okay. To do two units in the center. <clears throat> and I'm gonna get some heavies involved. Oof. Okay, there's my two. This is a fine howdy ho, and for the re Republic. So, whom would you like to attack first? Uh, let's let's do the heavies. Okay. So you do have at least a space open behind you, Brian. You can uh, you can perform an evasion on that, and only a green circle will hit you or hit those light slingers. Uh. Yeah, I was just to say, if you can designate that attack. Yeah. There you yeah. Go. I'll do that and hope maybe <laughs> he get might out of this make alive. it. Five dice, <laughs> maybe. We'll see. It's not not impossible, but hey, he lives. <laughs> That's what we call a great evade right. because otherwise he'd be dead. Okay. Well, I'll try the medium. And then does he get the option to advance or not because I was evading? He evaded, or you evaded, so he cannot advance, right? Okay. And I have the same choice here, same right? Same choice here. a light yep. unit. Yep. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to... So, four dice on this one, only green circles. Another good evade. Yeah, and the leader doesn't help in this case, huh? Right, exactly. So All he's right. he's going to go back one more because an evasion is always two if if you can, and okay. that's it. Okay. So, uh, and four is my max, right? Four cards. That's right. Yep. Now, another mm -hmm. element of this game that uh, that new players will will pick up through experience is, is knowing when to shuttle units to the rear so that they perhaps are not victims. <laughs> um, you know, when, when they get to less than perfect efficiency and in, in effectiveness, then, yeah, it's time to get them out of there if you can. Sometimes that's not capable, but not possible, but, yeah. Sometimes are there they cards? 
Are there cards to reconstitute units as well? Yeah, there's a, there's a rally card. So for units that are adjacent to a leader, you will roll a, a bunch of dice depending on your command, and you okay. can uh, add blocks depending on if you get the matching symbols. Gotcha. All right, I think I'm gonna do this. couple of really great lines. So you've got one from here all the way down to here and one from here to here that uh, they can all basically take a step forward and start attacking. Yeah, I'm thinking that I'm going to activate this one. Uh, he can't go on that hill. It's impassable. Oh, that's right. Fudge. Yeah, that kind of sucks a little bit. Guardians may take all movements after successful close combat. Mm. Yeah, see, the other guys aren't close enough. Yeah. I think I'm going to activate them all anyway. So, if that's Hannibal, where are the elephants? <laughs> yeah, we already had that battle. Have you? Uh, yeah. Well, not we didn't, but uh, yeah, that was uh, uh, earlier. Actually, no, it's it's after this one, I think. Yeah, there's a couple of really good ones with elephants. I didn't want to add that complexity to this one, although they are hilarious in combat. Can yeah, imagine if they go and panic or something, or they, they do stomp, exactly. Stomp if, you, the units, right? if if you roll a a flag against them, they have a rampage and they at basically attack everything adjacent to them, friend and oh, foe great. alike. <laughs> All right, I think I'm going to do that attack. Okay, so what, what's your combat here? I'll keep quizzing you guys. Five, five dice plus leader. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Ooh. So you yeah. got two hits. Is that not three from or it's the it's the symbol that you're attacking plus the leader. Oh gotcha, okay. Nice or cross order. Yep. Long ones. Yep. Okay, two hits. And do you smack back with three? And you get one. Now you get to do a leader check to see if you inflicted a casualty on Hannibal. So you'll roll two dice, and if it's net, yeah, if it was double leaders, you'd kill Hannibal. Phew. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And... Hmm. Do. This one next. Okay. So that's going to be three dice. Straight up. Yep. Perfect. You got a hit, and you forced a retreat out of him. Oops. I think that was still selected on that one. Let me undo that. And there we go. The two for retreat? Or Just one for the auxilia. Yep. Okay. And, uh, Brian, you may take the hex if you wish. You don't have to, but you certainly can. Is, now, is that part of uh, just the normal combat, or is that part of this extra momentum advance? Uh, that's one and the same. It's uh, That's your momentum okay. advance, yep. Okay, and then they can battle again. Uh, no, they don't have a leader attached, so they just get to advance into the space, but if you had a leader there, or if they were a warrior or a cavalry, they would get an extra attack normally. Okay, so even... so the, I guess the card doesn't say that there has to be a leader, but that's just something that, that's, that yeah. I would know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there's yeah, so a small they're, difference... They're, between, they're just not eligible. Right, it's there's a of. difference between momentum advance and bonus combat. So okay, all right. Uh, 
What are these lights going to do in the face of... Uh, I am going to... There you go. Baby. That is the one correct answer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think my guy's got four, yep. four dice. And, and, and the only... leader doesn't matter because they're evading. Right? Exactly. So green circles only. Yeah, it's good evade. All right. And goes two if he can. Mm -hmm. And he has screened you so you don't get to advance, and that's it. All right. Ooh. I'm going to step away just for a moment. I'll be right back if you have any questions. Uh, let's get some left flank action here. Looking at the charts here to figure out what my move fire, no fire <laughs> restrictions yeah. are. Uh, basically, all light units uh, can, as long as they move one hex, most everything can fire. Um, the the light infantry here could move two and still fire. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, my auxilia here can't really get in. They can't move the full two and right. close combat, right? Right. Okay. Exactly. Um, and they could do. I guess they could do one and missile fire. No. Oh uh, yeah, one and still missile fire. Mm-hmm. And this uh, this is a great example of what you were somebody was asking before if if this auxilia moved here, he does yeah. not have line of sight. That's not have to line there, of sight, right? Gotcha. Okay. So uh, we'll do because of the hill or because of the medium. Both. Or both. Yeah. Both. Okay. So both sides have to, one of the two sides has to be open. Exactly. Okay. Can you fire over units? No, sadly. No. Okay. Now this this light, if I'm going to use him to for missile fire, and just keep him there. I mean, exactly. he's one of my three, right? So yep. these mm -hmm. would be my three. Okay. okay. Uh, in general, what's the advantage or disadvantage of? I mean, close combat would I would think have more advantages. Yes. So you would generally want to do that over. It will typically be the most impactful if you were to do these light units with their missile fire first. Yeah. They could potentially make this one either be eliminated or move away. But this one, because you've got him blocked in right here, that's probably your strongest punch right out of the gate because he has nowhere to go. So would it actually, and you don't have to tell me, but it would actually be better to put my um, light here for close combat given that this leader is penned in? I mean, more of a risk for me. He'd probably get yeah, because uh, what's great about flattened. it is if if they if they stay still, they can still throw two dice at either one. If they move yeah. here, it's two uphill, so that doesn't matter, and it's two against mm -hmm. them. The difference is the slap back. So if you yeah. if you don't kill him, he's going to hit you back. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Okay, um, let me. I'll okay. I'll use these three then, and uh, let's. Start with some missile fire. I'll see if I can soften him up a bit. And it's going to be two. So he didn't move. That is right. And nothing. And, uh... Zulia here, he did move, so he's got one. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, let me designate this. Did I get that right? Yeah. Okay. That's a hit. And with that comes a leader check. So he will take uh, the one block off, and then you'll roll another pair of dice to see. Oh, Ooh. almost. You winged almost. him! <laughs> and uh, now the big fight. OK. 
Okay, and these are going to be four. And that is two hits. And that is a wipeout on him. So you take the, the medium cavalry block immediately as a, as a trophy. And then you'll now roll one die to see if you killed the leader. And he manages to escape. So he can move back up to three hexes and attach to a unit. Um, there you go. And uh, and you can advance if you wish, but you don't get additional combat. Okay. Uh, I will... Let's see, they only move one, right? Typically? Yeah. Yeah, I'll go ahead and move Unless that's suicide, but uh, um, so <laughs> let, let's think. Let's think all the way through this. What would happen? Yeah. Would you say if those cavalry perhaps came around here and surrounded you? Yeah, cut them off then. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna leave. Them. Prudence and all that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fair enough, and uh, that should close that out. I assume the uh, number of blocks affects your number of dice on the attack? It does not. In Ancients, it it's not? just it, all the way to the last man, they still fight at full full strength. Okay. Yeah. Like Memoir. Yep, exactly. <laughs> yeah, Napoleonics uh, has the a That's reduction system, right? Right, it does, uh, and I and I really like that until it started working against me, and then I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> but what what I actually love more is the tricorn, the American Revolution version of it from Compass, whereas yeah. uh, it's it's still about the same. It's it's positive. It's you know it's if they're at full strength, you get this. If they're at this, this, and so it's like base plus bonuses. But my favorite part of that is the rally checks. So these little American militia that. If if they you know they get hit and are forced to retreat, they must make a rally check, and usually it's piss poor. And if they roll, if they don't roll in a certain amount of flags to stay on the field, they run off the field and they're just gone. And it's like, oh my god! So maintaining battlefield cohesion is so deliciously difficult in that game. What's the rationale behind uh, four versus six in uh, in command? The, in in that, this one, surprised? yeah, exactly okay. so. Yeah, uh, Hannibal surprised them at the lake at Lake Trasimene uh, in northern Italy, and uh, he he came around the hill and they were not expecting it. And Flaminius was like, "What are these barbarians doing?" And so they they are surprised. Okay. And it doesn't come up high later on in the, in the game. It started, no. he actually started with two cards, and then, Ouch. yeah, he got very surprised, right? And then he gets, a, he gets a third card, and then he's back at his max of four, because he's not quite as competent as Hannibal is. So, those, uh, those warriors, let's talk about those warriors. They're, they're crazy. They can move up to two and still in battle in close combat. And if they move to second space, they must battle in close combat. So, you have some good potential there of, of how they come screaming out of the hills. Yeah, I think they're lining up to do something in the future. Okay, sure. cool. Um, the thing about warriors is um, when they're at full strength, they get four dice in combat. If they get nicked at... Oh, and they get to ignore a flag. If they get hit at all at some point, their subsequent combat, they only get three dice, and they are subject to to uh, retreats. So they're great shock troops to get, get in there and just beat the hell out of something. just realized that I was looking at one of these uh, units as... <laughs> Like it was an enemy unit. It's not an enemy unit. Um, We're all friends here. Don't kill us. All right. Put that up. And then... Actually, you're gonna... Uh, 
There we go. So, so that's going to be five dice plus leader, right? Uh, yeah. So I'm just curious. Uh, you had uh, you had two and two, right? So which two uh, are accurate? So yeah, it's the the heavy here, and then and just for... these two. Yep. Okay, got it. Yeah. So five dice plus leader. Ah. Okay. Five dice plus leader. That is a kill. Oh, yeah. boy, howdy. That'll do. Yes. It's like an overkill. That would have been four hits. <laughs> so now you have the option to advance, and because you have a leader attached, you may do a bonus combat. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, oh. I think I'm going yeah. <laughs> yeah. to... Yellow did say it. Just... <laughs> um, Doing what Hannibal does best. So, uh, same thing. Yep. Oof. Jeez. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> well then okay my quick math says he is also wiped out <laughs> that is indeed correct <laughs> an astute mathematician you are sir see carry the four <laughs> yes, because... sadly I mean, that, sadly those immediate... just a one time right? just the one time a... yeah. now he can okay. advance again but he doesn't get bonus combat yeah I think I'll sit tight yeah, <laughs> yeah. And the, the mediums next to you are like, hey, that was our job. <laughs> How many VPs are needed to uh, win this? Sir? This one's six. So the, the the number of banners down here at the bottom, that's what okay. the, it's a race to get to it. Yep. Okay, assuming I'm doing this one right, the uh, counterattack then allows me to basically replicate. Exactly so. The outflanked. Yep. Okay. I like that it even tells you there at the bottom. That's right. cool. Well, I don't know if medium versus heavy is a very good idea, but. Sometimes you can just try to kill him before he kills you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It seemed to be the logic. All right, and I'm going to an attack with this other auxilia for my second one on that. Okay. Flank. So on the other flank. Okay. I will start on the left flank. So auxil auxilia get two from moving. Right. And they're attacking uphill, so they're capped at two. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yep. Yeah. And, that and, is he, and, and he has that option, of course, to evade. He chooses to exercise it. <laughs> that's a nice hill. Yes. All right. So, capped at two. Okay. No effect. All right. Well, so the medium troops are then out of range. For anything. So switching over to Hannibal. Well, let's. Uh, let's see. It looks like it's got. Better hope you get me here. The hit back is going to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's Raging Bull. You never got me down, Ray. Seems to be uh, 
trying to go here, clear attack markers. Let's try that. I'm, I think it's still stuck on my left flank uh, medium troop that didn't attack. Is there a clear or something? Uh, I think can... you just need to click on the unit that you want to attack, right? Well, yeah, but it's uh, this medium one over here. I'm, I'm not in range to attack anything. Okay, that's fine. Right? Uh, yeah, right. Yeah, but it's like, what are, I try to... How can I... I, I uh, good question. I don't know. Let me see if I'm gonna click on. I clicked on yours, and then, and then, can you click on him? Oh, still. Hmm. That's kind of weird. Let's see. It is weird. Little buggy. There you go. There. Uh, I'm I mean, trying to switch you're attacking Hannibal, but I think. You know, okay. We, yeah. The intent is clear. We'll just, <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. Oh yeah, it it always puts it on the leader as the top of the stack. Yeah. So don't. Yeah. Okay, so that's just going to be a standard four. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Nothing. Now you can he take. He ignores the he, first flag. He, he ignores the flag because Hannibal's there. He may take it if he wishes, but he's not forced to take it. I think I'm gonna sit tight. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that that is also the correct answer. And uh, wait, he gets he gets the attacky back. So five dice yep. plus leader on that one. And uh, two hits. Two hits. Yeah. Right. All right. Last attack over here. So it'll be no movement, so it'll be three. Correct. That's two hits. And then uh, three back. That's right. Okay, wow. You, you managed to wipe him out because his line of retreat is blocked. So two hits, ah. and uh, and then he just takes that last one. Okay. And So, Andy, where are you from? Brian said he's from Iowa. Where are you? I am in Madison, Wisconsin. Oh, nice. Okay. Dangerously close to, uh, yeah, dangerously close to Noble Knight Games. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Um, let's see. They come screaming from the hills. They do indeed. Yeah. And then with my last one, I think these guys are are just kind of running away. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Conservative now. Okay. All right. Well, this is uh, this 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 could be it painful. Is. It could be interesting. Could be interesting. This is where the tide turns, though. So mm -hmm. <laughs> be, care be careful, Brian. <laughs> no, I, I, I got you right away. where I want you. What happens. you. You've been warned. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, auxiliary is just going to take Warriors it. get four dice because they're untouched. That's right. Plus leader, right? Yeah. They are the unsullied, yes. And ignore a flag. And they do. Or when they attack back. So they'll get to ignore two flags with the leader, too. Two flags. Oh, wow. They are fearless. Or at least crazy. Ooh, boy. Oh boy! Oh, that's uh, that's what we like to call a kill. That's yeah. Two hits, two retreats, which are in driving them into the lake. Going swimming. All 
All right. These guys are going to attack. Uh, same thing, four plus leader. Mm -hmm. That's uh, three hits. Ooh. Okay. And a leader check. Uh, Almost. Ooh. And now He's you get, feeling the heat. Yeah. Now you get four back plus leader. All right. Two hits. You have sullied them. All right, I think that's everything. I think there was a flag on that attack too. Does that? Does he, that get, he gets he to ignore it. He had a, ignored it. Yeah. yeah, he had a leader. Oh, because he has a leader, right? Yeah. 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 Gotcha. I had the same thought for a second there, and then I and then I thought a little bit longer, and I was like, okay, there we go. Yeah. That's yeah now you, you you certainly could have taken it, Andy, but then he could he could advance and then attack again, yeah. which you don't want to do. Yeah. Yeah. That lake that lake is not good property either. No, it is not. Is that at your back? Boy, card selection is not not the finest. Is there a turn limit to the game? Nope. I mean, you could, I guess, with those chess clocks, you could say, all right, we got one hour, you know. Uh, uh, no, I'm just curious, because it was, what, turn six now, right? Yeah, I, I like that it does record that, because then, you you know, if you're keeping that kind of detailed log, you could say, oh, you know, we played this. Now, normally what you do is you play, the, you play this back-to-pack, -back, so you'd switch sides, and then... Whoever ultimately had the most banners captured, they are the, the victor for the, the whole scenario. All right, so my light units that I got left here. Mm. Uh, that does not include Exilia, though, does it? It does include Exilia, yes. Oh, it does include Exilia, okay. Yep. Good. I was just thinking about how I shouldn't be leaving that guy out there. <laughs> uh, let's see, on the left flank, I don't think any of these... Oh, well, I guess these could... There are four, wow. Yeah, you got a couple lights over there. Yeah, but I don't know if I can move them into and still be effective for. Um, well, I guess they still get their full close combat dice, right? They do. Okay. Or you can throw some spears. <laughs> These guys right here are very effective uh, chasing down horse meat. So, ah, okay. Because then they oh, can get into close combat and they're, you know, attacking with two, and that gives him something to think about. And, okay, so Exilia here, I can get them up two, it looks like. Yeah, two, they can move two, they, but then they're, they're done. Then, yeah, they can't fight, so they can't really get into range. But, uh, well. Set up for the next time, sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four. That's my four. Okay. Start over on the right flank, or well, my right anyway. And they. Let's see, yeah, they moved. Yeah, but I guess they still get their two. Yeah, two dice in close combat, right? That's a hit and retreat. All 
Alright, let's see if we can get any any horse meat back on the menu. <laughs> And uh, because they're on foot, you're yeah, you can still evade. Right, they am back at two. Oh, oh, look at that! Oh, hey, K killed him. Horse, horse on the menu horse tonight, back. boys. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no more like right. damn elephant. Oh. <laughs> Very stringy, but we'll take it. Yeah. Okay. These guys. Sorry, you had, I had a lot of good evasions earlier, so I can't be really upset that you got a couple greens finally. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that other Xilia is spent, and then back to the center for this guy, penned in as he is. Okay, the Xilia, he's going to do three. Mm -hmm. Three plus leader, yep. That's a kill, too. Oh. Making it respectable for the Romans. Yeah. Nice cutback. Okay, and uh, that's enough for the history books on that turn. Okay. Patrick, how does this play in on Vassal in solo mode or solitaire mode? Uh, I have not done it, but I, I did see that this uh, the solitaire does have the capability to turn on and off the uh, the CDG solo bot. So that seems oh, like okay. something they added oh, for this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not messed with that yet, but uh, yeah, I, I got my copy. Solo, you know, just yeah, on the off chance that I, I will try it, but uh, I'm I'm really I'm not a solo player. I I need friends on the internet. You know. <laughs> Need to be able to play. So, uh oh. Yeah. I should see what the card is. Okay, yeah. A big push in the middle. And then I think for the third one, I'm just going to activate the light slings, but they're just going to attack from range, so. I think I'll do that. Uh, they do not first. currently have a line of sight on anybody. Oh, I thought they could see through this gap here. Not through the gap. You need either one of these sides open. So if he moves there, then he has a line of sight. Okay, so I could do that yeah. first, yep. and yep. then... Okay. Um, because he moved, he's just doing one die, right? Just one die, yeah. And uh, you may take that retreat if you wish. That was for, yeah, Le Laminius here. Mm -hmm. it strikes me that that would be a good idea. That would be a great idea. Yeah, yeah. I wish and I hadn't done that. <laughs> one, one of the reasons I, I love just, uh, I love teaching this game is seeing the light bulb moments. Like, do yeah. scared him away. That's right. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. <laughs> so, what was your third unit on uh, on the center? It was going to be this one. Oh, it was okay. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, very good. How many can the warrior move? Two, one. They can move up to two in battle. If they move two, they must battle. I guess he could have got a, gotten around behind him there, I guess, eh? With two. Wow. He sure could have. It does yeah. seem like in hindsight yeah. he yeah. should have done that. Um, <laughs> there, yeah, well. I think at the time I was thinking I wanted to leave him there because then he is still in range of the other leader. Exactly so. so. Right. So. Yeah. Retreats are not always optimal until they are. Yeah. I mean, plus I don't want to just hang my two out there to mm -hmm. <laughs> get killed. At least one of them have to move into range of my other stuff. Uh, All right, at the risk of repeating myself here, I'm going to repeat my maneuver. And... I came up here. So the leaders always have to be on a unit? They do not. You can have them detached and just out on their own, but they're very vulnerable. Okay.
All right. Well, and I'll use the uh, medium here. I'll activate him for attacking. Is there anything I have to do at this point to activate him? No, I think you just uh, just on. move. Just, yeah, move. Just and... leave him there. Yeah. Okay. What are you doing well, on the left and, side? Well, uh, and... I got a taste for horse meat, so I think we're going to try, to come, <laughs> try that come come out of the hill screaming maneuver and see what happens here. Sure. Um, let's see, mediums are just one on movement, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. The lights could, I guess they could get in play. Right. Uh, it's still... So they can get here and then still close combat? Yes, they can. Okay. Well, we shall try that. Uh, start here. And he should be hemmed in. Yeah. Was there a modifier from the hills again? Uh, just capped at three on the way down, so that's what they do anyway. You're, yeah, okay. So you're fine. There's a hit. Do the same. I get to hit back. Oh yeah, yes, you do. yeah, you do. So, yeah. so two up I hill. get two, which I'd be capped yeah. for the hill. So the right. same kind of like no difference. That's right. And nothing. Okay, and then coming from the lights, back same target. Uh, that's he's gonna roll two. There you go. Don't call it a comeback. Okay, now this historic right flank. Now I'm going to try the light infantry. Let's see if we can get lucky today. On a green circle or a flag will kill him. There you go. And just like that. Odds are even. Sudden death. Well, may as well go for the big one. Try oh, yeah. and kill Hannibal again. Yep. Yeah. Not letting me click on that I think again. You, uh, I just, do I, just click I just on Hannibal click directly. Somewhere? Yeah. There you go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. This is a moment there. There you go. Two hits. Um, and a really mad Hannibal. <laughs> and <Yeah>. now, <laughs> now you check to see if you kill Hannibal. Yeah. And you do not. Definitely But not. yes, he's, he's going to say okay. charge. <laughs> yeah. So I hit back at five plus one still, right? Five plus leader. Or five yeah. plus leader. Sorry. That's what I meant. And there you go. That is two okay. hits. Congratulations, Brian. Game. You have reached the game, guys. Your... Yeah. All right. Not a skin of my teeth. It feels like. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was my impression the first time I I dabbled in this was how you could get a lot of momentum and you could be fooled into thinking, well, the narrative is written. It's just three, four turns till victory, and then boy, does yeah. it swing. Oh yeah. And yeah. the narrative that goes with that, I think, is really really interesting. Yeah. Yeah, there's. I mean, there's, there's always a chance. I think a skilled player can, you know, do the cool hand Luke, make something out of nothing. But, you know, sometimes it is. Yeah, you, you get you get five or six banners out there, and it's like, oh, I've got one, and then you you fail your personal morale check. Yeah, yeah. As you proved, you can still do it. All you just got to pick your battles, right? And right. hold on. So uh, yeah. thank you everybody for for watching here today. Uh, I'm going to put a link in the text here to uh, my channel that has our playthrough of this. So if you want ever want to go back and watch those, uh, we're we're up to the last expansion now. So we've been doing this about three years. But um, okay. yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for watching today. I'm going to throw this up on YouTube as well, just as free content. So uh, <laughs> if if you ever need to get a hold of me, feel free to uh, to reach out. And uh, thanks, thanks it, was, it was great to watch. Yeah, thanks again, Patrick. Good hey, game, Andy. Yeah. Take, Great game. Take care. Well played, guys. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.